and survival. It will occur consciously and or subconsciously to attack the possessor of the most powerful genetic material. See, black people, we are the possessors of most of the melanin. So we have the greatest potential to cause white genetic annihilation. And so therefore the attack on black people, black people, we can't even talk about lynching and castration right now. It's so disturbing. But what you put on that is why did they do it? And once they answer, once you get the answer to why, then you can relax and discuss the matter. You see, because black men in their time, some black men have shot white men. Some black men have stabbed white men. Some black men may have punched a white man. <coughs> they Frederick Douglass punched his slave man. But there's no report of black men tampering with white men's genitals. <laughs> I saw somebody taking a baby eye. I hope I'm not talking. <laughs> You see, so somebody can do a PhD dissertation on why black men don't have to be bothered about white man's genitals. <laughs> because they're not afraid of them. No. No big deal. No big deal. Because a mother reported to me that her little five-year-old was in a predominantly white school and a child <coughs> came home, black male child, five or six years of age, came home and told his mother, because it's, you know, one or two little black children in the class, everybody else is white. So the little children had gone swimming or they were in the shower. And a little boy told his mother that a little boy, Billy, and the, you know, the mother was he black or white? I don't what's happening here. So a little white boy, a little black boy told his mother, the little white boy said, you have a big penis. You know, the mother was stunned. This is little children dialoguing about who has a big penis. I mean, the little white boy raising an issue, right? So the mother picked herself up off the kitchen floor, I'm sure. <laughs> And she said, well, what did you say? So the child is going on, putting on his sneakers or taking them off or something, no big deal. He said, I told him all black boys have big penis. <laughs> See, now, there are people who may not understand how relevant this discussion is. But the discussion of who has the biggest penis is an ongoing discussion. And there is a reason that it is an ongoing discussion. A five-year-old can say, well, I don't see why you keep raising the question, get a hundred white men, a hundred black men, and a tape measure, and settle it. <laughs> but I say that white people continuing to raise that question because black men don't go on the workplace talking about who has the biggest people. But the concern at one level may be about size, but I say the other deeper concern is about the power of the genetic material that is in the testicles that exits through the phallus. And if you don't understand, somebody ought to say, do you know that in this area of the world called the United States, the highest rate of incarceration on the planet? And do you know who is there out of all proportion to their numbers in the population? 
the black male. 20% of whom are in prison, 10% of whom, 3% of whom are in the colleges. So if you want to deeply understand what's happening, it is because of the concern about the genetic power and the power to cause quite genetic annihilation. That is causing that. For example, I also thought about justifiable homicide. What is that? What is it? Okay, this is a smart glance. <laughs> Justifiable homicide, the exact definition of it, has to be when a white male in uniform kills a non-white male. Because there's nothing on record of a black man in uniform ever killing a white man and saying, oh, I thought he had a weapon. No instances whatsoever. Does that mean that it's because a black man can see better? <laughs> Or something else deeper is going on. I say something else deeper is going on. That I thought he had a weapon, and so therefore I know he's 14. I didn't know it at the time that he's dead. Or he's 34, I thought he had a weapon, he's dead. Or he's 24, I thought he had a weapon, he's dead. Or he's 54, I thought he had a weapon, and he's dead. Well, he did have a weapon. But he didn't have a gun. So he didn't have a gun. He had the power to cause white genetic annihilation. And by simply talking about it, you can win an election. Willie Horton. Two words are more important than a million dollars. Why? Because Willie Horton was a black man that Michael Dukakis let out of prison who subsequently raped a white woman. And all they had to do is keep talking about Michael Dukakis let out Willie Horton, Michael Dukakis let out Willie Horton, and all the antennas started beeping white genetic annihilation, white genetic annihilation, and the election was won. But understanding this, I also understood that the white brain computer collectively said, uh-oh, he has a weapon that can annihilate me. <coughs> I must create a weapon can do the same thing. <laughs> this is the front view of the male genitalia. If we look at it laterally, don't get offended, gentlemen. This is just diagrammatic. <laughs> Turn this around 90 degrees, and you have this. And what is that? It's a gun. And what do they call it in the white supremacy culture? The great equalizer. See, did you ever say, why do they call it the great equalizer? <coughs> Meaning, if my genetic material does not allow me to cause his annihilation, I must create something to help me. And so I invent the gun. And it's worn on the hip at the same level as the genitals. Need I say more? So after we leave here today, everybody, instead of saying, what's happening? You greet other black people by saying, you do know what's happening, don't you? <laughs> so after understanding this, see, I'm telling you, if you begin to really understand what white supremacy is, and you get over the shock, that integration won't be possible under white supremacy. Are there ushers available to pick up the people? <laughs> Why isn't integration possible? 
See, we get deeply into the story of the great social scientist, Dr. Martin Luther King. He gave his life behind his hypothesis. He said, I think the answer to racism is love and nonviolence. And this is certainly love. But if there are people who are concerned about genetic annihilation, what will happen when love goes into the area of sex? And you take the nine tenths people of color, black, brown, red, and yellow, and mix them with the one tenth white, and everybody's loving. <laughs> and white will then what? Disappear. So they said, I'm sorry, Dr. King. We know you're talking about nonviolence. But you don't really understand us. As quiet as it's kept, we are talking about white genetic survival. See, the disappointed divide just corrupt. <laughs> just drop. <laughs> we'll never get over that, people. You mean to tell me you remember that? <laughs> I wish it were possible, meaning that everybody could love. But if people are talking about something else, see, when you respect yourself, when somebody else comes on the scene saying something different than you're saying, your respect for yourself causes you to listen and to respect them. So if the client comes along and says, I'm talking about white survival, don't go into some hate act with a picket sign. Say, oh, okay, well, why not? Well, can you explain that? <laughs> or the Nazis said, no, no. Aryan nations, white. We're killing the black people and the Semites. Now, I'm not going to just say, well, go ahead, but I'm going to say, I don't do anything to me or to us. But I understand what you're saying. You're telling me you're afraid. And so then we go back to look and see what they did. Here's the male genitals, and if the brain produces an abstract of that, you have a cross. Did you ever wonder why they burned the cross on a black person? No. Oh, that's just something they do. No, they're telling you. Your genitals can destroy me, so I'm going to what? Destroy you. So at this moment, let me advocate for this nice audience. Don't go yelling and screaming and picketing when somebody says they want to talk about white supremacy. Invite them to the shrine. Right. And let them go into infinite detail. So you would like to, you know, here you have a platform or somewhere you have a platform, go to the church and talk about what you believe in. We will listen with respect. That's right. Now you shouldn't be thinking, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> no, 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 no. Listen and say, well, I don't agree. I understand. I don't agree with what you think you must do. But now I understand you. In Germany, they were talking about white supremacy, white genetic survival, and they had a swastika. And you take the little wings off of that, and you back at the cross. <laughs> and this is what that means to them. Armored Christian soldier, marching as to war with the cross of Jesus, just us. You 
do know Jesus was a black man. <laughs> so when they start talking about with the cross of Jesus up in front, meaning we got this in our mind. That black man's genitals. We got to keep this under control by whatever necessary means. See how quiet <laughs> But we're going to get accustomed to thinking and talking because why? We have reached the end point. We ought to have reached the end point that anybody with IQ above zero ought to see that we have been asking for a change in behavior for a very long time. And so it's now time for us to respect ourselves and hear people when they say, we can't change. We can refine and modify, but we can't change. Now, yes, we can get a certain number of white men we will allow to relate to white ladies to fool the rest. <coughs> but we are about the business of white genetic survival. Which means then that it's as though we are at a chessboard. And in the game of chess, that's a very wonderful analogy to racism, white supremacy. Because in the game of chess, white always moves first. <laughs> chess is a game of war. I didn't design it that way before 100 years ago. Black used to move first and then white would move first. But they said, no, it's more appropriate for what, the way things are going now. <laughs> that white always moves first. So white is playing offense, defense, and black is playing defense, offense. And it is a game about the white king checkmating the black king. In case you did. It's not just about winning. It's not just about checkmate. The game is based on what the first move is. And the first move is the white side of the chessboard moving. So understanding all of that, one day, one Sunday, it was very quiet in the District of Columbia. When it's quiet, you can think. That's why they have loud music for us. Boom, boom, get on, get on, get on. <laughs> You see, so it's so much sound stimulation that the brain computer goes into complete shutdown. <laughs> but then they'll say, this is your soul station. This noise is to help keep you in oppression, and I'll addict you to it. <clears throat> because I'll make your living conditions so horrible, and since you haven't figured it out, then you'll be trying to get away from the reality with sound or drugs or alcohol or something. But I'm here to tell you that quiet is what the brain computer needs. You see, or some quiet rhythmic music. So I said, that's white music, no, quiet. <laughs> Black people in Africa set up those tone scales. So not a lot of that, no. But I said, quiet, oh my brain computer is just humming along. What's happening? And then I said, oh, it was Sunday afternoon and the ball games were going on. So I said, the ball games must have a deeper significance. Put that in the brain computer, and shortly thereafter, the brain computer said there are two series of ball games in the white supremacy system in culture. But somebody who's never heard, who's never heard me discuss it before, anybody who's heard, don't say it, please. <laughs> but anybody who hasn't heard, what are the two series of ball games? So you're looking at it all the time, but what? Mr. Fuller said, you don't understand racism, white supremacy, what it is and how it works. Everything else that you think you understand will only confuse you. So I'm asking you a 
the question that you are looking at all the time. Are the Falcons playing right now? No. <laughs> <laughs> Who's playing? Oh, they told me. The Saints and the Reds next time. Okay? Or the Raiders, right? Who's playing? No. Redskins and 49ers. <laughs> okay, but what are the two series of ball games? No, that's a, a C <laughs> The two series of ball games in the white supremacy culture are big round and small white. Come oh. on. See, you tell me, oh no, this is your sports. Mr. Fuller said, all areas of activity, entertainment, that's including sports. Everything is influenced by the dynamic of racism and white supremacy. And so the two series of ball games are big brown and small white. Where's the big brown? Football. Basketball. Soccer. Soccer, bowling. <laughs> Somebody said earth ball. <laughs> that big, huge bird. Okay, small white, ping pong. <laughs> Golf, tennis, baseball, huh? Bad. <laughs> what does this mean? I told you that the fundamental issue in the culture is not democracy. <laughs> oh no, it's about competing economic systems. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Why we have just not watched what the marriage of capitalism and communism and who's still out in the field. <laughs> People of color, so we should be man and woman enough to say, well, we were mistaken. The dynamics on this planet are about white supremacy, white genetic survival, and white minority in the field of a majority of people of color. And so the games that are played play this out. Football. Who does the white female say is her ideal me? Tall? Blonde? Oh no. God. <laughs> and handsome. Okay? So these games with the big brown balls, and what are these called, gentlemen? <laughs> balls, they got? <laughs> and the culture tries, they try, they keep trying to tell you because they say this is about what? Keep your I oh. on <laughs> What does this mean? That's another way of saying what? White genetic survival prevents white genetic annihilation because they're talking about these balls. But at the same time that there is a concern about white genetic survival, the white female says, my ideal mate is tall, dark, and handsome. And the white male says, sex symbols for me are black stockings, black navel jays, and black underwear. <laughs> and the white female says, when I'm really dressed up at my most sophisticated, I have on my basic black. <laughs> and the white male says, when I'm dressed to the max, I have black tie and tails. Okay? At the same time that we think it's terrible to be black. <laughs> so, these 
ball game is very important where they go. Where does this big brown ball go? Are there some white upright legs at the end of the field? <laughs> Don't you have to get the ball here in order to score? <laughs> the basketball goes into a white net. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then you have some little white girls with short dresses dancing here on the side. <laughs> Is that correct, ladies and gentlemen? Yeah. <laughs> see, an old lady asked me the other day, how do you see that? I said, I don't know. <laughs> but I know I didn't structure these games. Nor did I structure the game that the most powerful white men play, which is what? Golf. Golf. We're over here now. Small white series. <laughs> <laughs> what do white men say? Hole in one. No, I mean, I know it's about a hole in one. <laughs> but white men say they're not men until they've had sexual intercourse with black women. The standard. <laughs> Just like the white lady is interested in tall, dark, and handsome, the standard of manhood. And we're the standard of womanhood on the planet, black ladies. So with the small white ball, And a long stick held between the legs. <laughs> and a puck. <laughs> See, they used to have what? Black men standing behind them, carrying the long stick between legs and it feet, which is the same thing as this, ladies and gentlemen. This is a ball and this is a stick, whether it's golf or whether it's baseball. So they're trying to get this little ball in a hole. Where? <coughs> More fundamental. Somebody said in the green. In black mother earth. I told some white male bankers that. <laughs> Way high up in the sky, great big tall building, right? Oh, oh, oh Dr. Wilson. <laughs> <laughs> then I lost my job. <laughs> it didn't stop it from being true. Look at the game of billards. Triangle containing balls. You know what that symbolism means, right? Vaginal orifice, and here are all these balls. A whole lot of colored balls. Take this off, and then long stick and white ball. What is the game about? The white ball not two. All of the colored balls off of the table. See, nobody, see, people are doing these things and not realizing that they're playing out white supremacy. And a black person will come along and say, you don't want to be caught in 98 ball. <laughs> <laughs> Who is the eight ball? <laughs> black people. See, white supremacy is the white ball being left on the table. The most powerful ball, the black one, is knocked under the table after all the lesser balls are under the table. And then the white ball knocks 
the black ball under the table and white genetic survival is assured in terms of symptoms. 